So we are going to do the rear brakes on this BMW F7 530 GT. Have the car jacked up in the air. Remove this plastic wheel bolt cover. Either use a screwdriver by using it. Be very careful or gentle with this. Or you can use the plastic pry tools. So remove this one. And then you can start undoing the bolts. So in order to retract the electronic parking brake, you need to use a software or diagnostic tool, which I have here. So you can choose this function, the EPB, that means the electronic parking brake. So with that function, you can retract the electronic parking brake and then you can twist it back. But unfortunately in this BMW, there are a lot of issues and trouble codes. So I'm guessing I won't be able to retract it with this diagnostic software anyways and if you can see the battery level is below 12 volts so i think it needs 12 volts to retract it but i'll try anyways and as far as i know another thing is that the electronic parking brake one side i'm not even sure either the left or right side is not working on this car the guy didn't get it fixed so i'm gonna show you how to do it with the software tool and if that doesn't work i'm gonna show you how to do it manually so you can twist it back. So let me try it. So it shows what condition must be met. So it did something, but I haven't heard the parking brakes moving. So I'll see if it will be retracted. So once you have the wheel off, the steps are the following. You need to remove this retainer spring for the brake pads. Then you have to undo these two guiding pins for the brake caliper. It is one here on the top and another one down here on the bottom somewhere. They have caps, so just you need to remove the cap. The cap is off, so you need to use a size 7 hex bit. Also on this side we have a brake pad wear sensor. It is usually two on the car, one on the rear right and one on the front left. So I chose this side for you to be able to see how to replace the sensor. And after, later in with the diagnostic tool, I'm gonna reset the wear indicator settings for this car. So without further ado, let me show you how to do it exactly. Remove this retainer spring, place your hand in front of it to avoid something jumping into your eye. So basically you just pry on it like this and it is out of the way. Remove the dust cap from the bottom bolt as well. So use a size 7 hex bit for the guiding pin. Once you broke it loose you can do the top one. So in order to make your life easier, it is a good practice that you move this guiding pin out of the way with the help of a screwdriver. See here the threads, so you just stick a screwdriver in there and just pry on it a little bit so that it is not attaching to the caliper holding bracket anymore. Yeah, now it isn't attached to the caliper holding bracket, so the guiding pin won't be in the way, so it will move freely and it will be easier for you to remove the brake caliper after. So again, use a size 7 hex bit and the ratchet and then brake loose the top guiding pin. Again, you can push it out with the help of a screwdriver so that it doesn't attach to the brake caliper holding bracket. So it's done. Now we can disconnect the brake pad wear indicator or brake pad wear sensor from the brake pad itself or you can just use these kind of pliers and then cut it now it's out of the way then you need to trace the cable of it and then remove it from the brackets and here attaches to the connector you open this tray from this side Pull out the brake pad wear sensor plug and basically press on this end and pull it out from the plug. Now we can remove the brake caliper, use the screwdriver as a helper, so basically you just pry on, on the top and on the bottom and slowly, slowly you can remove the caliper just like this. After you can remove the brake pads from it, this is quite stuck. 
now the outer is out you can pull out the inner one basically pull on the sides then you can remove it you can clean the brake caliper with a wire brush then you can clean the brake caliper holding bracket with a wire brush because in this case you are not going to replace the rotor only the brake pots So you can do it two ways, you can either remove this completely and clean it, do it in situ as I'm doing it, clean these parts when the brake pot goes from inside as well. You can clean the inside of the brake caliper as well. Also, when you push back the brake piston, you can clean underneath as well. Just be careful you don't tear up this rubber boot. Now you can push back with the brake piston. I'm gonna use this tool. So have the tool in between the brake piston and end of the brake caliper, and then you can just start ratcheting it and it will push back the piston. Also, don't forget to open the brake fluid reservoir, take off the cap and monitor the level of the brake fluid in case of flowing out suck or siphon out a little bit of it so now i start to feel a resistance i just reverse the ratchet and i remove the tool and i can clean underneath the brake piston finally we can put the new brake pads back in and after that step we are halfway through the job Also, don't forget to put back the new brake pod wear sensor, connect the plug and then start routing it back where it was before. Close this little plastic box. Basically, you have the grooves here and you just clip in. You can do the rest when you have the brake pods and the caliper on in the brake discs. Place the outer brake pod into the brake caliper holding bracket. The inner one, you just push it into the brake caliper. Just like this. Now you can slide over the brake caliper. Make sure it sits properly. And then you can start to tighten down the brake caliper guiding pins. And then you can connect the sensor and put back the retainer spring as well. So now let me start with the top guiding pin, place the ratchet inside and then start tightening it down. Don't tighten it all the way. First start to tighten the bottom bolt as well or the bottom guiding pin. And then you, once that is in as well, then you can tighten them down all the way. So do the bottom bolt. Now you can tighten the bottom one and then switch back to the top one and tighten that one as well. Also, don't forget the dust caps. So now we can connect the brake pod wear sensor. First route it through the hole where the bleeding screw is for the brake caliper. Then how you connect it, proper way is where, where you can see this notch that goes this way. So facing towards from the rotor and you are inserting this into the inner brake pod. So let me show you. Here is the groove for the brake pod wear sensor and you insert it this way and you just slide it over. It keeps in. So now it is properly fitted back. And lastly, reinsert this retaining spring. Proper way how to fit it is you tilt it slightly at angle, place this this side inside the holes, and this way these top and bottom outer sides are behind the bracket, and basically you just push it in. So the top is in, the bottom is not. You can push it in with the end of the screwdriver. Yeah, now it is in and just make sure that it's all the way in. And finally, you can put back the wheel, reset the computer and enjoy the new brakes. So here is a quick tip from me how to put a wheel back on easier when you don't have the wheel studs sticking out. Basically, you can purchase this kind of pin, you thread it in where your wheel bolt goes, and now you can put the wheel over it. 
it is very handy in these kind of situations where the wheel is fucking heavy.